pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Good evening. Welcome to Monday, June 6, 2022, Board of Aldermen meeting. Can I get a motion to approve the minutes of the previous meeting? So moved. Second. We have a motion that's been seconded. Any discussion, questions, comments? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes. All right, let's start with outside the rail. Uh, Farmers Food Center ARPA request. All right, would you mind coming over here, saying your name, and uh, just walk around the outside if you don't mind. Thank you. Right over the podium over there. Thank you very much. Hello. Hi. Hi. Um, my name is Heidi Lynch. I'm here to speak on behalf of the Vermont Farmers Food Center. Uh, I've been with the organization for the past eight years, and I was appointed as uh, executive director earlier this year. And we're here to speak to the letter that we submitted requesting uh, ARPA funds from the city to help us get the Farmers Hall facility reopened for November 1st when the farmers market moves back inside for the winter. So the reason we're here making this request is because we have a unique timing challenge. And what that is is that we have, since we discovered the air quality contamination issue that closed down the building, we've been working with the Department of Environmental Conservation, the Planning Commission, um, and the engineers that are helping us develop a solution. And we have all the information we need to proceed with an, <coughs> excuse me, an air mitigation system. And we are um, part of the state's Brello program, which provides funding for this type of environmental cleanup. But in order to go to Brello, you have a one-time application opportunity. And we are being advised that we should go when we have all the studies and information to address all the contamination issues on the property. So in order for that to happen, the deadline would be well past the November 1st deadline to get the farmer's market and all the other food vendors back in there. So hence our timing challenge. So if we were able to bridge that gap in timing, we would get the funding to implement the system, reopen the building, apply to Grello when we have the rest of the information available to us, and then address the rest of the contamination on the campus. So that's why we think it's a unique opportunity to work with the city because we, as the residents and um, you know area businesses that have been affected are the most impacted by this timing challenge. So that's where we're here today and I'm joined by some of the board members from the Vermont Farmers Market to speak to their constituency as Great. well. But that's that's the gist of our challenge and why we're awesome. proposing this request. Thanks. Thank you. The letter is in your packet. Anybody have any questions? I'll move to refer to Finance Committee. Second. We have a motion to refer to Finance Committee. It's been seconded. Any discussion? Uh, oh, okay. All those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes. Thank you very much. Thank you. So that finance committee meeting will be warned at some point, and then if you guys want to attend that, Matt will coordinate with you. <laughs> Thank you very much. Okay. Still in outside the rail, companions in wholeness donation request. This is also in your packet. Is there anyone to speak to this? Okay. So there's a letter in your packet for um, for companions and wholeness. It's a donation request uh, for feeding some of the needy um, under the Rutland United Methodist Church. Okay. You wanna? No one is here, sir. So I can't really speak to the uh, request, although I have had a couple of conversations with uh, two of the principals over there uh, that's involved with. Uh, the program that they're, uh, the numbers they have, and I think they reflect that in the letter, their numbers have increased exponentially in the last, especially in three, four months. And um, they don't have enough volunteers, uh, they're having trouble uh, you know, raising enough money to, uh, you know, to buy the food to, to give out. And uh, they are, um, obviously there's a need. Um, but as far as the, that specific request, I don't have any information. Okay. On the um, I'd be willing to make a motion to refer to finance and maybe somebody from the organization can come I'll speak second. to it there. Okay. We have a motion to refer to finance. It's been second. Any discussion? Questions? Hearing none. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Oh, sorry. Are we still the rail? Yes. Hold on one second. We're just, uh, any opposed? Motion passes. All right. Come on up. <laughs> Jack Crowther, 24 Tuttle Meadow Drive. 
Uh, Chrissy Torrey spoke to me before the meeting, which kind of um, mostly answered my question about when, when the fresh look at fluoridation was going to happen. The request was made in November uh, by mutual agreement. It was agreed to wait until the new board of aldermen was, was seated before we took it up. I understand Chris has uh, <clears throat> a lot on his plate, so I'm, uh, I'm, I'm not rushing, but uh, at the same time, uh, I'd like to get this process going and uh, completed and, and um, make a decision about whether the, the city is to continue uh, fluoridating its water supply. Um, so uh, I've told Chris that I'd, I'd rather see it done sooner rather than later. Um, I brought um, a letter just reiterating some of the recent research on uh, neurotoxicity of fluoride, and I've got copies for each alderman, as well as a couple of suggestions on, on how the process of re-examining fluoridation uh, might work, just my, just my input. So uh, that's, that's all I have uh, to say. And there's one for Jim Rotondo, too, that maybe could be given to Hen Henry. To oh, okay. Uh, I believe this has already been referred. Okay, Chris, go ahead. Thanks. Yeah. Uh, thanks, Jack. And as I spoke to Jack earlier, uh, this is all on me. I've had a lot of things with work and my health uh, happen over the past six weeks. So I'm going to try to get this done for July, hopefully plan it out. I think it's important, as Jack said, to give it the look, right? Bring in people and let's do it again with you know different uh, opinions. It feels like some things have changed in the community since we looked at this a few years back. Um, so I really I do want to do its due justice, and so I apologize for the delay in its taking. Under, understood. I've had kidney stones myself, so <laughs> yeah, I know what they do to you. Great. Thank you very much, Jack. Right. We are still in outside the rail. Is there anyone else that would like to speak from outside the rail this evening? Okay. Hearing none. We'll move on. Communications from the mayor. Okay. Well, thank you very much, and good evening, everyone. I uh, just had a couple of things tonight. Uh, one uh, is on the agenda in, in your packet, uh, and that is a nomination for a vacancy that has occurred on the Rutland City Police Commission. Um, I'm putting forth the name of Elise Hedlum. Uh, as most of you know, Elise is a longtime city resident very active in city affairs and in particular Project Vision, big supporter of the uh, Rutland Police Department and the city as a whole, and I believe will make a truly wonderful police commissioner. So with that said, I would ask that you table the nomination until your next regular board meeting. So moved. Second. A motion to table the nomination has been seconded. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes. Thank you very much. Uh, second, uh, I wanted to remind everyone that uh, a week from this Wednesday, which is uh, the 15th of the month of June, at 6.30 over in the auditorium at the Rutland Intermediate School, uh, Project Vision, the police department, and myself will be hosting <coughs> a uh, public meeting uh, regarding the homeless program down at the hotels and uh, the one two in particular that we're going to um, zoom in on although there are uh, homeless folks um, the program has is in other hotels around the area but we want to concentrate on uh, the two problem areas and those are the quality in here in the city and the Cortina in in Rutland town so I just want to remind people at home, this is a public meeting. You're more than welcome to come. As a matter of fact, I'm encouraging people to come because I think this is an opportunity to um, have a discussion with the state, to have the state hear clearly what our concerns are, not just from city governments, but from the um, neighbors and, and the public as a whole. Uh, we do have a moderator. Uh, we're going to hopefully allow people to have their say that night and um, hopefully we can um, get our message across about uh, what a concern that is uh, that we're having down here for a lot of different reasons. Um, as I do every month, I did have a meeting 
with a small contingent of folks um, this last Friday up here in my office. Uh, there was a representative from the Department of Economic Services as well as the um, Executive Director of LIT. Um, and there, there was actually a, 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 a representative from the Methodist Church who came and attended the meeting. And um, she, uh, you know, talked a little bit about the, the program that uh, she's involved with and the number of people that are coming uh, to uh, the, the church right down the street here to access their breakfast and lunch program, and a lot of them are from the hotel. So, um, again, that's just straining the services that we, are, that we are providing here in the city. So, anyway, um, didn't learn a lot new. Um, <coughs> folks aren't the decision makers. Um, I think it's more important than ever to, to hear from, uh, hopefully, the, uh, the commissioner, Sean Brown, from, uh, uh, from uh, Montpelier will be down, and he'll be able to answer some of the questions that we're all asking. So, I look forward to that. <coughs> Uh, that's what I have on, uh, that I've written up on the agenda. I know over the last uh, weekend we've had um, quite a discussion here in the city about a proposed um, gun shop, gun sales, et cetera, uh, over on Temple Street. And um, I've tried to communicate with people as fast as I could once I learned that the proposal has been uh, withdrawn, uh, that uh, it's no longer an issue um, over on in that area. So. Um, I think we've said about as much as we can. I don't know if there's anybody has any questions. Um, Andrew is here from the zoning administration and uh, our zoning administrator, and I can certainly, you know, I found out about this on Friday. Uh, we reacted to it quickly. Uh, we seem to have come to a good conclusion. So, Alderman Davis. So probably more for Andrew. Yep. I mean. Yep. So. Um, Andrew, with home occupation, um, the, the rules and regulations are there about the impact on the neighborhood, the traffic that uh, can or cannot occur, but we really don't define home occupation as far as you can have a beauty shop or you can be a seamstress or you can do this. Will you be tackling that in the zoning? Um, so I had a chance to speak with uh, Matt and outside counsel regarding this and um, it's when it comes to firearm regulation there does seem to be a lot of um, uh, not a lot of leeway for a municipality to have uh, to implement certain regulations and uh, ordinances over firearms it seems to be limited on based uh, based on what the state uh, kind of gives the municip municipalities to do uh, I guess it, it would be worthwhile to explore what the mun municipality can do with firearms and the proximity of schools and other other establishments um, you know and uh, just to provide some clarity uh, with the home occupation business it really is something where uh, whatever the product being sold or service being provided uh, I kind of have to have blinders on when I'm reviewing uh, the application in relation to the regulations and uh, the way the home occupation uh, permit regulations read is it's more of an impact to the surrounding area uh, such as traffic and how many people are coming and going to the site and uh, how much uh, goods they're providing to be sold um, so uh, that's kind of how this got as far as it did uh, you know there really wasn't any uh, latitude for me to just because it was a firearm you know just look the other way so um, but yeah I think it's a worthwhile discussion uh, to see what the municipality can do as it relates to firearms in the in the city um, and I, I think that would take a coordinated effort with uh, Matt and uh, probably the outside council as well. Thank you. Yep. Any other questions? Great. Thank you, Andrew. Mr. Mayor, anything else? Awesome. Fantastic. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you. All right. Moving on to additions and deletions to the agenda. Uh, we're removing the second executive, executive session uh, related to negotiation of a contract. We are adding a... Um, report of standing committee from finance and actually if there's no objections i'd like to remove the standing move the standing committee reports up in the agenda before reports and letters from department heads and officials is that okay alderman Neary. one more edit there's one chartered ordinance and one parking not two parking committees. great thank you <clears throat> All right, noted <clears throat> um so that being said um Alderman Whitcomb, can you go ahead with your finance committee report? Uh, oh. Alderman, oh, Alderman sorry. Do we need to make a motion to that effect? To, to add, change the agenda? To add and delete. Oh, uh, I don't know. Do we need to? 
I don't yes. think it needs to be approved. Okay. All right. All those in favor of making those changes to the agenda? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Awesome. Thank you. Um, appreciate that. All right. Alderman Wickham, All if right. you mind. So you should have a copy of the Finance Committee report on your desk, everyone. Uh, the Finance Committee met on May 17th, 2022. The topic was the Wonderfeet Kids Museum. Members present were Alderman Davis, Alderman Tory, Savage, Talbot, and Wickham. Others present were Danielle Monroe, Dean Pierce, and Paul Gallo. The meeting was called to order at 5.30 p.m. The meeting opened with Danielle reviewing Wonderfeet Kids Museum's development plan, including a move to a new location within Rutland City. Danielle provided detail regarding the attractions they intend to include, partnership with local stakeholders, and discussed the increased traffic they anticipate bringing to Rutland City. Danielle explained that the majority of the construction would begin toward the end of summer of 2022, with an anticipated completion date of early 2023. Other women Savage inquired as to why the request from the city had increased to $150,000 compared to the original $100,000. Danielle explained that in planning process, it became apparent that the total project cost was going to exceed the initial projections. Alder Minatori noted that he had previously served on Wonderfeet Board. He noted that there is no current conflict of interest. Alder Minatori spoke to how the museum both helped with economic development as well as early childhood development. Danielle noted that she viewed Wonderfeet as an engine for families to make connections in Rutland, especially news families to the area. Alder Woman Davis noted that she had concerns related to a $50,000 increase. She indicated she would support $100,000. Paul Gallo discussed with the committee the way in which Wonderfeet helps provide preventative care to young children and ultimately aids in their development. Paul cited that investment in early childhood development allows for cost savings to the school system in the long run. Although Woman Davis reiterated her concern with the increased amount, saying that there were many other requests before the city that need to still be considered. In addition to childhood development, Paul cited the positive economic impact he believed that would result from this project. Although Talbot expressed his support for the project, citing the plan as a good use of ARPA funding. Alderman Talbot moved to recommend to the full board the approval of $150,000 for the Wonderfeet Kids Museum from the fund formerly known as ARPA. The motion passed four to one, and I so move. We have a motion. Second. It's been seconded. Any <coughs> discussion, questions, <coughs> comments? Alderman DePoy. So I don't know if this is for the chair or maybe for Paul, but um, I'm just I'm, I'm curious as to why the increase, and I. I is it related to the current economic times with the um, severe inflation going on out there, especially in the building materials, that sort of thing? I mean, what's going on to request the extra 50000 Well, first of all, <laughs> would you mind coming up just so that the TV, that would be great. Thank you. Thanks. Um, Danielle Monroe, executive director. Uh, so a couple of things drove the increase in the overall budget from 500,000 that we originally projected to 600,000 that we're projecting now. One of those things certainly is the increase in building material costs from when we first started budgeting this project last summer. Um, the other part is that as we got into designing in the new space, um, we, we added additional exhibits to fill out the space, including um, an exhibit that specifically reflects Rutland City's history, which is a miniature version of the Main Street Park gazebo with an exhibit highlighting the Rutland City Band history. Um, so we included that in the overall cost, and that was what drove our request from $100,000 that we originally projected to 150. Okay. Any more discussion, questions? Alderman well, Davis. Uh, not discussion, really. Um, again, uh, I had the opportunity and the pleasure to meet with these folks at Wonder Feet. Um, and the request initially at the time was 100000 which I uh, supported and still do. Um, I did also have the conversation, I believe, um, that we had $4.4 million and $7.3 million worth of requests. <laughs> um, and I, I, I think I made that pretty clear. So I think that was my concern when another $50,000 was requested. I think it's wonderful to do the gazebo and do the history, but I also know, I also have a responsibility on this side to look at the projects that are still pending, some that will directly affect the taxpayer's pocket mm -hmm. and try to hold on to some money for them. So that is my only reason for uh, voting no on the additional $50,000. 
Um, I think it's certainly a benefit to the city and the benefit to the families and the families that visit here. Um, it's truly mathematics. Okay. Alderman Tory. Thank you. Um, so uh, as I said, uh, I am no longer on the Wonderfeet board, but I was involved for a, a, a long time. Um, the uh, 150 that came to us really formally, the 100 I think was more of the kind of informal conversations that we were having, and I think a number of us had um, saw the potential in the new, new facility and thought there was an opportunity that we could really invest more in it. And I think uh, between the amount that we've given to the hub and, you know, potentially of $400,000 as a match and the money that we've given to the Paramount of about 450, it feels like 150 to kind of make this really in a solid and, you know, downtown that's going to really draw people in. Um, I think it's a worthwhile uh, use of the money. One of my measures has been since um, uh, what we used to talk about with the Zamias is that if this was the last 50,000, would you give it to this project? And if this is the last 50,000 of ARPA money, this is absolutely the project we should give it to because it hits on, both, on a number of different fronts. It hits on economic development in terms of drawing people down from Killington. It hits on our um, children and our uh, early childhood ed and helping our kids grow up into you know, good members of society. And moreover, it helps develop a community. One of the things that we found over the years was how families would start to learn and meet each other and know each other. Um, Danielle has a program, it takes a village, and it's really about building community. It is one of the few places uh, in replacement of some of the clubs that used to exist where families can create community. So it is absolutely a worthwhile use of the 50,000. Perhaps they should have more, but I think they would probably settle on 150. Thank you. Alderman Wickham. Uh, just real quickly, President Dunn, just sort of to the point of what Alderman Tory is speaking to, I think one of the reasons I find it easy to invest in Wonderfeet is they're bringing forth a proof of concept. They've done this, they've been successful. They've sort of demonstrated that there is this extensive halo reach in which people will come from a certain distance to come into Rowland City. You know, with, with the expansion, you would hope that that number would then create, uh, kind of increase exponentially that it would drive more traffic into the city. They would come here, visit Wonderfeet, spend money in other local businesses. I, I think they have one of the better business models that we've seen in the fad come before us. All right. Alderman Tadia. I just also want to note um, the savings that are provided for the school system in the long run because investing in our children now means that taxpayers aren't having to invest later on. So I think it's really a wise use of our money. Right. Any Alderman DePoy? One last question. Um, I, so, given that we're going to be talking a little bit later about um, the parking deck and the pass-through and everything, what, what is the pass-through to access from the parking deck for where you guys are? And, and is there any in our, in our current location or in the, in, in the, the new, new in the new location? Is there anything to get people from the parking deck straight in to your facility or close so to there, it? So they won't be able to access directly into Wonderfeet, they would either use the West Street Tower exit or come through the Asa Bloomer building exit and, and onto Merchants Row that way. So, so that, I mean, that's where some traffic does come through the Asa Bloomer and you're not that far. Correct. Kind of a similar walk through to the Center Street. It, exactly. It's a pretty similar distance to our, our pass through to the parking deck in our current location. Yeah. Okay. All right. Thank you. Mr. Mayor. Yeah, thanks. I just uh, want to say, reiterate my support for the, um, for the request. Um, you know, we did have a discussion initially. You came and, and saw me and talked about, we talked about the 100 or about whatever it was going to be. And I understand the, the thought process behind the increase. I guess what I would just say in my support is that in your discussions with the owners of the building, which is Green Mountain Power, is that correct? Yes. Uh, that you are working on a deal with them that uh, maybe they could be made aware of that the city is stepping up and, and, and doing this, uh, you know, extra um, support and uh, maybe a little bit of more support can come from them too. I don't think that that would hurt. I think that would help the whole situation and put a lot of people at ease. So, okay. thanks. Okay, any further discussion or questions? Hearing and seeing none. <laughs> All those in favor of the motion? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? No. 
One, no, all the rest eyes. Motion passes. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Just feel free to go move to the front. <laughs> okay, moving on. Alderman Neary, your pick, parking or charter and ordinance? We'll do parking first. The Relton City Parking Committee met on June 1st. Members present were Chair Neary, Alderman Dungis, and I may have missed somebody else, but I don't believe there is anyone else there. Others present, Mayor Lair, Alderman, Alderwoman Davis, Gordon Drusillo, Camden Thompson, Alderman Gillum, Officer Rosario, Erica Balestra, Attorney Bloomer, Alderwoman Taddeo, Ken Putnam, Andy Paluch, and Alderman Depoy. Chair Neary called the meeting to order at 5.33 p.m. The first item on the agenda was the parking garage, including the passageway to Center Street. This was a follow-up meeting to the April 27th meeting with an expanded scope of the entire first floor of the parking garage. Erica Balestra, owner of the passageway to Center Street, provided some information regarding the issues around the passageway. Balestra stated that conditions had worsened in the passageway, including substantial damage to property, which led to the shutdown. Those conditions had improved since the shutdown, which was echoed by adjoining property and business owner Andy Pluch. Camden Thompson from building, Vermont Buildings and General Services provided some information from the state perspective, including what the current contract with the city allows and disallows. Attorney Bloomer suggested that Officer Rosario and Asa Bloomer Building Security could partner to make routine rounds of the first floor transit area and add security cameras of the area with monitors at the Bloomer Building Security Desk. Thompson informed the committee that it may be possible and would follow up with his superiors on the idea. Contract negotiations between the state and city will continue with some changes expected. Chair Neary asked Thompson about facilities plans and if there were any scheduled. Thompson was not aware of any scheduled but would look into it and follow up. It was suggested that an in-person safety audit be conducted of the area to develop a plan of action. Mayor Allaire agreed to meet with BGS personnel during this site inspection. The passageway will remain closed indefinitely until enhanced security measures are installed. There are no motions made out by the committee and the meeting minutes are presented for informational purposes only. Meeting adjourned at 6.17 p.m. Awesome. Any questions for Alderman Neary? Okay, moving on. All right. The Rowland City Charter and Ordinance Committee met on June 2nd. Members present, Chair Neary, Alderwoman Taddeo, Alderman Franco. Others present, Alderman Dungis, Attorney Bloomer, Chief Kilcullen, Alderman Talbot, and Zoning Administrator Cerinsky. Mm -hmm. Chair Neary called the order, meeting to order at 5.33 p.m. The first item on the agenda was implementation planning for the new shopping car ordinance. This was a follow-up to the, to the parking garage. Oh, that's a carryover, sorry. This was a planned follow-up meeting to the April 7th meeting. Attorney Bloomer began the meeting by reviewing the documents that were sent to Rutland City businesses that were, will be impacted by the updated ordinance. The documents included a cover letter explaining the attachments, <coughs> the effective cart nuisance abatement program plan template, and a copy of the updated ordinance. The committee then re reviewed the timeline of Im implementation with letters sent on May 27th, effective date of May 31st, committee meeting on June 2nd, applications due and review beginning seven, or July 2nd, <clears throat> and a hard deadline of August 2nd. The committee also reviewed the procedure and discussed which city entity may be able to complete the task. The procedure task list includes review plans, additional outreach, develop um, standard operating procedures, plan approval feedback confirmation, develop a tagging system, develop tracking system, determine website feasibility, active versus passive enforcement, abandon cart tracking, notification and follow-up, fine issuance, adjudication, <clears throat> and a six-month follow-up. The committee determined that building and zoning may be the most appropriate department to house the database and provide routine cart patrol with the new code enforcement officer. The committee also asked if other entities like the downtown patrol officer and downtown partnership could assist with identification and outreach. Chief Kilcullen agreed that Officer Rosario had been addressing the issue and would continue to assist wherever appropriate. The committee also discussed the potential to use technology to reduce the administrative administrative demand on the city. 
GovPilot offers solutions such as citizen request slash complaint module. This could be linked to a database to allow citizen reporting, reporting of abandoned shopping carts, reducing the demand on zoning department. The committee also discussed the potential for a simple Google Forms survey linked to the city website that could be linked directly to the zoning office. Overall, the committee determined that it would be best to start with a simple approach, evaluate the administrative demand, and make changes based on that demand. The committee agreed that the demand would likely be higher to start and taper down over time, and that overall, the abandoned shopping cart issue has seen some improvement in recent months. Moving forward, the committee determined the issue no longer needed to stay in committee, and then the mayor should determine which city departments should be involved in the procedure task list. The committee voted unanimously on a motion to direct the mayor to assign the task list to the appropriate city departments. And I so move. Second. No motion, it's been seconded. Any discussion, questions, comments? Okay, hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes. Meeting adjourned at 6.04. Thank you very much, Alderman Neary. Okay. <clears throat> You're done with reports of standing committees. Moving on to reports and letters from department heads and officials. Uh, Building and Zoning Administrator uh, Andrew Sternstein, disposition of city owned property, pages one through seven in your packet. So uh, I'll start with 202 Columbian Ave. I believe there's some more materials that we want to get to the board before moving forward. Uh, I'll defer to um, Attorney Bloomer. Uh, maybe an overview about those. Yeah, I can give a quick, uh, quick background. So the executive session that we removed tonight was also in relation to um, the, the sale of 200 and 202 Columbian to the Housing Trust. Um, and Andrew's committee, the City Owned Property Committee, had a meeting uh, last week that he was going to report out on. Um, and technically, I think the board could take action on this tonight without the materials that I was going to provide for the uh, executive session. But I made the mistake today. My mind was a little bit elsewhere. Um, and I uh, let uh, Mary Cohen know that she, that she wouldn't be needed tonight for my part. But I forgot that there was another part for, um, for Andrew. So um, I just wouldn't want to have this come up and her not have an opportunity to um, you know, answer questions or provide additional information. So I was just hoping that the board would table um, uh, both the memorandum for 202 Columbian and the memorandum um, that's an update as to their uh, proposed project for 200 Columbian Avenue um, until the next meeting. And then I'll have the, um, the materials ready for the negotiation of the option agreement that they're looking for as well. So I think it would be better to do them all together, and then that way um, Mary will be here too to answer any questions that anyone has. Okay. Did you want to add anything, Andrew? Uh, not at this time, unless the board has questions for me. So, so do we need to table those? So moved. Yeah, you can either remove it, I we can put it back on, or a table would be would keep a bookmark. Ta I'll table. A motion to table has been seconded. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes. Awesome. Moving on to the next item, Andrew, non-tax revenue review. Pages. Sorry. <laughs> there is two. Uh, There's two in the same disposition. I apologize. So, Continue. Yep. My bad. So, uh, 33 Summer Street, um, as you see in the memorandum, we were unable to reach an agreement with the previous uh, selected uh, bidder, which was uh, Randy Bishop. Um, so last week uh, we uh, convened the City Owned Properties Committee on Tuesday, uh, May 31st. Um, so basically in order to get where we got, uh, we went to the next highest bidder, which was YNR uh, One Opportunity Fund, I believe is their name. Yep. Uh, and so um, Matt did a good job uh, coordinating with them and uh, seeing if they were willing to um, up their offer to what Randy originally bid, which was around 62 or was $62,363.88. Uh, so the bank came up, uh, which makes it a little bit um, easier uh, going forward. So um, the City Owned Properties Committee had discussed it 
and uh, vote it unanimously to uh, award the, the property to YNR uh, I Opportunity Fund with me refusing. Any questions? <clears throat> All the I have a question. I was waiting for a motion. Um, I'm not going to motion that. So. <laughs> I move to suspend the rules. Okay, we have a motion to suspend the rules. It's been seconded. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. So I'll move the motion, if I may, Mr. Chairman, to authorize the sale of 33 Summer Street to YNRI Opportunity Fund for the pur purchase price of $62,363.88 pursuant to Section 6.2 of the Rutland City Charter and to further authorize the mayor to sign all purchase and sales related documents. Second. We have a motion. It has been seconded. Any discussion? All the minutatory. Thank you. Um, so uh, when I saw this, um, I um, looked, I think I was looking at trying to find the minutes from the city owned properties meeting. And then when it said the uh, Summer Street, or the uh, Spruce Street property, was that what it was? Summer. Summer Street. No, no, the one that the other one, South Street. Um, I went back and looked at your minutes. I was not on this board during the time where it was approved to, to give uh, South Street to this organization, this group. Um, and then somewhere, one of those minutes, I saw that it's, this is, uh, I mean, as it says, a fund of a bank. Um, am I correct in that? I believe so. Matt, maybe you have a better uh, idea of how they're set up. I not only through, I guess, I only know through you telling me that they were related to the, the banks that had the, yeah. the note, but I don't know what the relation is or how they treat this entity. Um, I guess they're calling it YNR Opportunity Fund. They have a property management company um, that came through and did, did the walkthrough recently. I think it's River Valley. Um, yeah. But I don't know much about the entity or how they're, and I don't know which bank they're related to either. I don't yeah. know if you remember that, Andrew, or? No, and it's entirely possible that uh, someone told me, uh, you know, they represent the bank and I just glommed onto that. But okay. uh, at, at the very least, uh, you know, I, so if I can continue. So um, when um, this started, one of the things that we wanted to do, the city owned properties process, one of the things that was we wanted to do was make sure that the properties that we came into control of went back into the community, into the neighborhoods in a way that we wanted to see them. We made opportunities for the RRA to either take a property and develop it the way they saw fit um, or go out to bid. <coughs> In those, some of those early studies of 2013 and 2015, or 2019, part of the problem was uh, uh, property owners who did not live in town. Um, and uh, I understand that you have some, that the committee had some advice from the city attorney of um, that you must take the highest bid um, over anything else. <coughs> I think that there is no way we should be uh, authorizing one of the p properties that we have to a bank that is not a person or not a local person, and it doesn't have to be local, but that they are a person versus an entity that we can't, uh, you know, that we have to go through a property management company. I don't want us to put ourselves in the same situation that we were in a few years ago, where we had uh, neighborhoods that were decaying because of absentee property owners. Um, they don't have to be a bank to be an absentee property owner, of course, but it seems wrong for us to do this. And so I think we should, if the process needs to be that we only give it, we only sell these properties to people who live in with 50 miles or 100 miles or whatever that is, I, can't, I cannot in good conscience authorize a sale to an opportunity fund um, when we don't really know who they are or what they're about. So. Okay, so, Alderman Davis. I just have a question to Alderman e. Tory's point. So it says other notes also owns 100 South Street in Rutland. Have they owned that for a period of time? Is it a recent purchase? And what is this, what's the condition of that property under this entity? Um, to my, uh, well, first, I, I'm not quite sure how long they've owned it. I could uh, look at Access GIS. Um, uh, but my, uh, when we were screening the applicants for um, you know, this past round of city-owned properties, uh, no one had submitted any applications where they were deficient in COs or, uh, to our knowledge, any building violations or zoning violations. And I believe all of them had 
uh, no delinquent taxes or fees. So, um, so Andrew, Andrew, do you know if they rehab and sell, or do they hang on to these properties for an unknown period of time? Um, based on the information that I know, I imagine that they keep and maintain because they do engage with River Valley uh, Property Management Services. So uh, I guess uh, my logical inference would be that they do uh, keep the properties on hand and uh, do maintain them. Uh, based on the information they put it, uh, they submit it in their original application, they were looking to have an anticipated investment of $75,000 into the property on top of 62000 which was their purchase price. Thank you. Sure. Alderman Talbot. So I agree with Alderman Notori's sentiment, but having sat on the City Owned Properties Committee, this was, we, this bid was significantly higher than the other two bids we received for this property, if I recall correctly. Yes. And you know, like you just mentioned, they're willing to put a significant investment into it. Um, I'd rather have it be a local property owner, but I, I think it's important to see that these rental units stay online at a time right now when nobody can find rental properties. All of them in Davis. Well, this one is to city attorney. So um, to the point that we have to take the highest bidder, um, what if what if we refuse this offer? I mean, uh, we refuse the offer based on the fact that it's not a a, a a local landlord, someone who's going to occupy the house. Uh, maybe better for executive session, um, but I think I think your some of your options may be to remarket the property. Um, I mean, the problem would be if you remarket the property and you get less than what this offer was. Um, you know, then the former taxpayer has, has a, you know, maybe a potential argument that the city should have taken the, the, the previous offer and maybe it's the city who has to uh, add, you know, kick in the amount to get to the 62000 to make up the difference between whatever the, um, the new offer is that it prefers. If, you're, if we're underneath what's owed in taxes, then there's quite a bit of leeway because then it's really just you all making a decision um, on the on behalf of the city as to you know you may forego five or ten thousand dollars but the project may be more valuable in your eyes to the city from either a tax perspective or just for the neighborhood or the community but when we are above what's owed to the taxpayer um, it really is the best practice to take the the highest bid um, or be prepared to somehow try to make that former taxpayer whole um, if you if you were to take a lower bid. Thank you. Andrew. So uh, and just for the board's reference, the other two bids back in, uh, when was it, March, uh, were uh, 40000 with a $100,000 investment and 25000 with a $20,000 investment. So uh, in totality, uh, with YNR coming up, uh, with their $75,000 investment that's uh, around, I, what is that, uh, around 140-ish, so. Mm -hmm. Okay, any further, Alderman Wickham. Just a comment more than anything, President Benjus. Uh, Alder, Alder Minotauri's point really does resonate with me, but I do think that based on how we've written the criteria, while this may not meet the uh, original spirit of what we were trying to do with city-owned properties, it does meet all the criteria it does come in above the taxes owed. We do have a fiduciary responsibility to the previous owner, as hard as that might be for people to hear, to get them as much back as we can. I think perhaps going forward, it may be worth looking at, is there any tweak adjustment we wanna to make to try to encourage this remain local investment by who will be ultimately a family living in the home? Okay, okay. any further discussion, questions? All right. Thanks. Um, so uh, totally hear what you're saying, um, and you know I, I, I agree. Um, but I cannot, uh, in good conscience, agree to vote to uh, sell a property to uh, an entity that's perhaps not even a person. Um, so I will ask for a roll call. So I'm on record. Okay. Thank you. Roll call vote. Any other discussion before we vote? All right. Ready? And this is uh, the sale of 36 summer, correct? That's correct. All the No. All the savage. Yes. 
I thought I called the roll. Huh? I thought I called the roll. Go ahead and call the roll. I don't know. It makes it a little easier on me. Go right ahead. <laughs> we have a no. Uh, Alderman Franco is absent. Uh, Alderman Savage, you are a yes. <clears throat> Alderman Neri? Yes. Alderman Talbot? Yes. Alderman Taddeal? Yes. <clears throat> Alderman uh, Wickham? Yes. Alderman Gilman is absent. Alderman DePoy? Yes. Alderman Davis? Yes. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one, two absent. Motion passes. Motion passes seven to one. Thank you very much. Ready? Yep. Good. Thank you. All right. So moving on, non-tax re uh, revenue review. <laughs> yep. So um, over the last uh, few weeks, uh, maybe a couple of months, uh, Mary and I have been um, just discussing non-tax revenue and the fee schedule. I'm going to use uh, you know the building and zoning department for context in regards to uh, examples, just since I'm the most familiar with that. Um, so I think. Uh, <laughs> The, the city should uh, maybe review their, uh, their fee schedule, the non-tax revenue, uh, because at least with uh, my department, uh, I think we're missing out on potential uh, opportunities to raise more revenue. Uh, for zoning permits uh, alone, um, we process probably around 115 a year, and the only fee that's charged is a $15 recording fee, so that fee actually uh, is transmitted to the clerk's office. So more or less, uh, there's no fee in regards to the time that I spend on zoning permit applications. Uh, the building department um, is uh, hammered with uh, certificate of occupancy visits. Uh, they do, uh, it seems like they are gonna average about 2,000 permits a year just in certificates of occupancy. Uh, we charge no fee for them, so uh, it's pretty much running around the city and uh, you know getting nothing in return. Uh, oftentimes, people will cancel, out of, uh, cancel on us on site a little bit beforehand. So we're going out there multiple times and um, it's more or less wasted time. Um, other times uh, they will tell our office coordinator that they have upgraded everything they needed to in the past certificates of occupancy and they go there and there has been nothing done to the property. So, um, you know, I, I think we have an opportunity here to um, perhaps either have a small, you know, processing fee of five ten dollars for these certificates of occupancy and that alone can raise you know a, a decent amount of money depending on how many they're doing in a year um, and then you know if we have a penalty fee for if they're telling us one thing and we go out there and it's not done you know maybe it's a twenty five dollar fee or um, you know maybe uh, maybe even larger so uh, those are kind of the issues that um, you know, our department would like to look at. Um, we charge uh, nothing for paper, um, and we do get a lot of requests for copies of listers cards and the like. So um, tying this kind of to my next uh, proposal, I think this could be a potential opportunity to offset some costs and generate more. And, you know, that's just in the building and zoning department. Um, I know there's probably a lot of opportunities elsewhere within the city that we can potentially uh, look at and get more money. And I'm sure uh, Mary could attest to some of that too. Alderman Tablet. So I'll make a motion to refer or review the city's non-tax revenue sources and fee schedule to the finance committee. Why not? <laughs> I, I was just thinking it could also be chartered ordinance because the fees, the uh, certificate of occupancy lie within an ordinance uh, as well. So it doesn't really matter. We're pretty busy. I think there's like, aren't there like four <laughs> charter ordinance meetings coming up? Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, there's a lot in, there's a lot in finance too. Okay. In a discussion. It doesn't matter. It doesn't I mean, matter. it's, it's one, one yeah. half or <laughs> the other half. In a discussion with Mary, you know, we understood the workload of all the committees and given the, uh, the broad scope of this request, uh, one of the other logical places we were thinking were, was maybe the general committee. So uh, I don't know what the board thinks about that. So currently we have a motion to refer to finance. There's no second. Second. No second motion. <laughs> okay. <laughs> 
<laughs> we have a oh, motion to refer to finance. It's been seconded. Is there any discussion about the referral? Okay. Hearing none. All those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes. It's going to finance. There you go. <laughs> Sorry. All right. Thank you. All right. Moving on uh, to the next item on the list. Uh, Administrator Sternesty, permitting software RFP, pages 9 and 10 in your packet. So, um, as you may recall from the previous budget season, I was uh, allocating approximately $9,000 for a new permitting software program. Um, and doing countless hours of research, I had landed on one that I thought would be good. I did a lot of discussion with them. Uh, we were hoping to um, do our certificates of occupancy within this software. Um, and given that I didn't know how much money I could potentially have, and uh, since we weren't really contracted with them yet, we could only go so far down the rabbit hole before uh, we really started looking at implementation. Uh, having a discussion with them, uh, it doesn't, as we were getting closer to the fiscal year and knowing what I had, uh, it doesn't look like it's really practical to do the certificates of occupancy. There would be a huge efficiency lapse when we really started exploring it. Uh, with that in mind, um, I, I asked them what would the next couple of tiers look like, and they had given me approximately 20 to $25,000 for that tier. Uh, given the increase, uh, if the board does allow me to go out to an RFP uh, with an increased amount, it does open up the idea to reach out to other software uh, permitting companies. Uh, one which I, I'm sure everyone has heard come from my mouth is GovPilot. Um, this is a um, could potentially be a, a citywide permitting uh, and government uh, software system. Um, for $25,000 or a little bit less, maybe 22, um, you could potentially get permitting software. And as um, Devin mentioned in his report today, uh, you could get a report, uh, report of concern uh, module, which would allow us to track the shopping carts very, very easily, as well as um, you know, uh, do other types of concerns in the community. So uh, one of the things, having served on the chair committee, uh, uh, the ADA related issues could be pointed out using the same software uh, if uh, you know sidewalks damage potholes in the street all of this could be tagged easily in the same module that we would theoretically use for the shopping carts so um, with that um, I would respectfully ask if I could go out for an RFP uh, for $25,000 and it would allow me to explore other uh, permitting software uh, companies in the event that uh, you don't, I would ask for the original amount in, <coughs> of $9,000. Motion to suspend the rules. Second. We have a motion to suspend the rules has been seconded. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. All the nearing. All right. Motion to authorize building zoning to solicit requests for proposals for permitting software not to exceed 25000 with the understanding that the full amount may not oh, be, be awarded. Second. Okay, we have a motion. It's been seconded. Any discussion? All the women Davis. What was in the initial... What was the dollar amount in the initial budget that was requested for the software? It was nine thousand dollars. Yeah. So. And and where do we anticipate the difference may come from? So um, it's possible with uh, you know if the if we can arrive at a fee schedule, uh, you know I think that could help offset some of the costs. Uh, what is good about these software permitting programs is. Uh, you can put the fee up front. So if they're looking to schedule a certificate of occupancy, they pay a $5 fee up front okay. before they even get to scheduling. Um, so uh, that's a potential place. Uh, we're lagging a little bit behind in terms of getting our code enforcement officer. So there's potential um, savings there um, within our budget that we could uh, uh, account for the uh, difference. Okay, thanks. Okay. Any questions, discussion? Okay, hearing and seeing none. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes. Good luck with your RFP. Thank you for coming. Thank you very much. All right, moving on. Attorney Bluer, referral, HR committee, fire officer personnel policies and pay scale, pages 11 and 12 in your packet. Attorney Bloomer. 
Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. So I did provide a um, somewhat uh, detailed memorandum just asking for a referral to the HR committee um, to review some revisions to the fire officer personnel policies that we're suggesting, um, as well as an approval of uh, the fire officer pay scale uh, going forward. Um, ideally, we, we could schedule that meeting um, next week, and that way the, the board could uh, potentially approve whatever comes out of committee prior to July 1st, um, which is particularly um, relevant to the pay scale. Some of the pay scale changes take place around that time with the new fiscal year. Um, the personnel policies are not, uh, not doesn't really matter when those go into, into effect, but sooner is better than, than later, just so people have clarification um, as to what what changes are being made. So really just looking for a referral tonight, but happy to answer um, any questions about what these personnel policies are. I tried to give a little bit of the history um, of, how, of how we ended up with person, separate personnel policies for the fire officers. Okay. Chairman. I'll move, Oliver Davis. I'll move to refer the topic of revision the fire officer personnel policies, approval of the fire officer pay scale to the Human Resource Committee. Second. Motion has been seconded. Any discussion? Questions? Okay, hearing none. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes. Okay, great. Next item on the agenda uh, Attorney Bloomer's settlement and release request, pages 13 and 14. Thank you. Um, so this is a, a minor um, incident that occurred where a contractor, um, not employed by the city, but a contractor for an outside outfit uh, caused some damage to Route 7. Um, and so the insurance company, their insurance company is um, uh, responsible for the damage and they've agreed that damage occurred. I think they may have been willing to mill and repave the area but because that area is scheduled to be completely redone in 2025 commissioner rotundo felt that it was it made more sense to patch the um the damage for now and to accept a five thousand dollar settlement um instead of having them uh do the work or pay to do the the mill and repave work so i have attached the release that they've asked us to sign um it's it's a standard release and after speaking with the uh, department, um, both the commissioner and the business manager, I don't have any concerns about the city releasing, releasing its claims in exchange for the $5,000 settlement. Um, so if that's what the board would like to do, I've provided the, um, the language for a motion. Alderman Neary. Where is this on Route 7? Um, that's a good question. Um, I probably have it in my email, but that's I don't. Fine. I don't know offhand. I was just curious. Yeah, one seventy-eight North Main. Oh, okay. Thank you, Michael. Yeah, it's on. The, it's on the um, release itself. Which looks to be across from Rotary Park. Okay. I haven't noticed it, so it can't be that bad. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm not sure exactly what caused it either, but um, some sort of piece of equipment or, or an accident. Sure. Or, Thanks. Okay. I will make a motion to authorize the mayor on behalf of the city to enter into the release of all claims in favor of Main Street America Insurance and substantially the form presented. We need a motion to suspend the rules first. Motion to that's suspend okay. the rules. Okay. Okay. <laughs> we have a motion to suspend the rules in second. Thank you. Uh, uh, any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Any opposed? Motion passes. You want to do that again? Now I'll make a motion to <laughs> authorize the mayor on behalf of the city to enter into the release of all claims in favor of Main Street America Insurance and substantially the form presented. Second. Second. We have a motion has been seconded. Any further discussion, questions, or comments for the city attorney? Okay, hearing none. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Uh, okay, and now moving, we'll move the executive sessions to the end of the meeting. Uh, we've done reports of standing committees. We have no reports of select committees. Uh, reports of representatives, uh, Alderman Neary, traffic committee referral. Sure. Um, <clears throat> we've talked about this before, but we're back here again. So at the May 20th traffic safety committee meeting, it was yet brought to our attention again that there are issues with parking on the green belt. Um, as of right now, the city is spending 
tens of thousands of dollars to do add concrete curbing to sort of a, prohibit the parking on the green belt. And so we voted unanimously by the traffic committee after several complaints from residents to uh, make a referral to charter an ordinance, an ordinance ref uh, referencing a um, parking ban on the green belt within the city right away. Okay. Second. We have a motion that's been seconded. Any discussion, questions, comments? Okay. Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? No. Okay. Motion passes. Alderman Tory. I had another rep report. Okay. Fantastic. That'd be great. Um, I had a, a, a planning commission, city planning commission. I told you um, I'm going to try to keep you updated as they go through the zoning process. Um, and um, maybe I should write something up, but generally they include the minutes in the piece so you can see the specifics. Um, I just want to let you know that uh, I've, uh, I've been attending planning commission meetings for a number of years and just when we went through all the sign ordinances and everything else. And I, want, I, I think this group um, uh, that the mayor has appointed is a really good group with different perspectives. Um, it's, a, it's really some engaging conversation. Um, and I think that they are well, are representing us well in balancing, you know, that interest in improving our quality of life, but also in making sure that development can happen in a uh, easy way. Um, making it so that we can try to reduce costs on de potential developers. Um, they're looking to put as much as possible in, uh, you know, they have permitted and conditional use and what has to be reviewed. The board is really, the commission is really trying to put as much as possible into permitted. So more things could just kind of sail through as long as they meet our, our minimum requirements that we're, that we're discussing. Um, so I just wanted to give you the update that I felt like it's a really good group that's balancing the, the pieces of quality of life, but really trying to uh, make sure that development costs are kept down um, by, you know, not making people jump through unnecessary hoops, you know, trying to reduce what goes to DRB or what gets reviewed by the zoning uh, administrator, you know, administrative uh, review, um, and really trying to see how can we streamline uh, the permit process. So. I just want to kind of give you that update and I'll try to do that you know monthly as we go on um, this last piece we actually discussed um, that piece in terms of permitting versus conditional use and I forget what's on the agenda for next time but there was something site the site plan review actually discussing what would be in site plan review so um, you know that the the draft that was presented kind of brought down brought us down a, a path but this group i think partly because they needed to kind of get back on board you know there are three new members that the mayor appointed back in march um uh, they're taking another step back um, but again i really want to say i think it's a really diverse uh perspectives um and i think it's going to be really good for the city as it comes through i'll try to keep you updated but take a look for the minutes as they as barbara puts them in that thing. okay thanks thank you alderman tory any questions for alderman tory Okay, fantastic. Uh, reports of representatives, any, any others? Okay, moving on. Petitions, letters, and miscellaneous communication. We have a uh, special events permit request, coin drop for the Humane Society for both June 18th and July 30th from 10 to 2 p.m. on Merchants Row. And this is pages 14 through 20 in your packet. Motion to suspend the rules. We have a motion to suspend the rules, and it has been seconded. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, any opposed? <coughs> None. Go ahead. And motion to approve <laughs> uh, the Rutland County Humane Society coin drop on June 18th from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. Also on July 30th from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. at the uh, location designated on Merchants Row. Second. Okay. We have a motion to approve the SEP request for June 18th and July 30th for the Humane Society. Uh, and it's been seconded. Any discussion or questions, comments? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes. Very good. All right, moving on to Board of Control Commissioners. Uh, we have a second class liquor request from uh, Quasium, I hope I'm saying that right, Enterprise LLC, pages 21 through 25. I'll do a motion, uh, motion to go into the Board of Control Commissioners. Oh, thank Sorry. you. Thank you for this. Okay, can I get a motion to go into the Board of Control Commissioners? I moved it. Second? Okay. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? All right. Thank you for the guidance. <clears throat> okay. Second class liquor request, Quasium Enterprises LLC, pages 21 through 25 in your packet. I'll move 
to circulate for signature. Motion to circulate for signature, and it's been seconded. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes. Very good. And we also have a first class liquor request for American Dream Restaurants LLC, pages 26 through 30 in your packet. I'll also move to circulate for signature. Second. Second. Motion to circulate for signature. Uh, has been seconded. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes. Uh, I'll move to go out of the Board of Control Commissioners. Okay, we have a motion. Second. We have a motion to exit Control Commissioners and has been seconded. Uh, any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? All right. We are now out of the Board of Control Commissioners. Uh, moving on to unfinished business. Alderman Neary, update on Park Mobile RFP. There's been a lot of talking about. Yep, so as you probably all remember, we made a motion a couple of meetings ago to go out for RFP for Park Mobile. Um, our purchasing manager, Sarah Magro, did some research based on other communities in Vermont. None of them went to RFP. That's not really the process for this type of service. So instead, what we did, um, based on other communities' experience, we joined a sort of group purchasing national uh, group NCPA, um, which gives us preferential pricing, uh, five, per five cent reduction in the fee from Park Mobile. Um, so I would like to update that motion to allow the city attorney and purchasing manager to enter into a contract through the NCPA program with Park Mobile. Okay. So is, uh, we have a motion to update I'll the original. Second. Okay, it's been seconded. Any questions, discussion? Yep. Yeah, I, I just lost track a little bit. Um, is there like a term sheet that you guys had looked at in committee so you have a sense of like what the pricing is? So that, because I'm more comfortable obviously if you decided it's a, you know, it's, you're good with the deal and then it's yes. more me working out the legal, um, yes. you know, the boilerplate type language. Yeah, we had already approved it from okay. the sort of committee discussion and now it's even a better deal, so. Okay, okay, perfect. Right. Yeah. And Sarah hey. can fill you in on the details. Okay. And just, if I may, Mr. Chairman, just Absolutely. procedurally, because it didn't go back to a discussion and the motion has changed, do we need to suspend the rules or are we good just moving the motion? Uh, that's a good question. I think because I think you would suspend the rules if the board, I mean, the board could refer the, the topic back to the committee, but given that it's come out of committee and a recommendation was made, um, I think you would suspend the rules and if you want to take it up tonight. Sure. You, you can okay. pass it. Um, I will make so motion to suspend the rules. Motion to suspend the rules has been seconded. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay, that passes. And then? Motion to direct the city attorney and purchasing manager to enter into contract through NCPA with Park Mobile. Second. And it's been second. Motion has been seconded. Any discussion? Any further questions or comments? Okay, hearing none. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes. Thank you very much, Alderman Neary. Okay, moving on. Miscellaneous motions, resolutions, and new business. Alderman Davis. So, um, if I may, I think I would like to see if we could get a report from the treasurer in regards to where we are with the ARPA funds to date. Um, what funds have been requested um, and are set aside, what that dollar amount is. Um, so the total of requests to date, um, and then we have a list, maybe the list of uh, requests that are pending, plus the two, well, I don't know if there are funds or not, but I, I guess I'm assuming um, the two that are received tonight. Um, because I think we need to figure out where we are with some of the projects within the city. Um, and, and I think this board has to determine at some point, do we continue to accept and fund outside requests? or do we say at this point this money needs to be spent within city government? So if Mary could at some point, there's no hurry to get us that, um, that information, I think it would be, be beneficial for us all because they're all worthy projects, but at some point we have to step back and say, I mean, there's an end. We knew that we had $4.4 .4 million, but we knew that there were almost $8 million worth of requests. So at some point we have to, we have to figure that out at the end. Um, I am not dissatisfied with any of the, the um, requests that we've done to date. I think they will pay the city back. Um, they're, um, I, I like the hub, I like the Paramount because it's going to return uh, tangible 
items to the city, whether it be jobs, whether it's reuse and meals, et cetera, et cetera. Um, but I do think we have to seriously take a look, and it's hard to say no, but sometimes we have to say no. And, and I think we, if we just get that information, then we will know where we are. We may have a lot more money and say yes to everybody. I don't, you know, but I think we have to take a look at it. Alderman DePoy and then Alderman Neary. Well, just to piggyback on that, you know, Sorry. we're doing the gazebo and the park restructuring, and of course that's something that would have to be done if we wanted to keep our gazebo and keep the band playing there in the summertime because right now they can't even use the gazebo. So, um, and that is city owned and that's a city, that you know, it's city infrastructure, which I think is a, a very good use of the money. Um, we also have Jim Rotundo down the hall here that's, that's asking for not just the 4.4, but even more than that um, in requests. And that's city infrastructure that is going to be borne by the taxpayers. I mean, because that's stuff that has to be done at some point. I mean, we can kick the can down the road until pipes are breaking or sewers are leaking or, or you know, whatever else needs to be done over at the, at the wastewater treatment center or at our water treatment center. And that's stuff that the, the money's either gonna come from ARPA or the money's gonna come from the taxpayer. And I know if you ask, John Q. Taxpayer, where do you want the money to come from? He or she is going to say, please use the ARPA money and don't tax me more for this infrastructure, which is, has to be done. And, you know, I, I voted in favor of the Wonder Fee and I, I voted in favor of, you know, of the Paramount and stuff, but I think Alderman Davis is right. We really got to watch where the <coughs> money's going or else these things that are coming to us from department heads. That's going to be taxpayer money, 1,000%. So um, I, I think we really got to put the brakes on the outside, um, you know, organizations that are asking for the money. I mean, and God knows I wish we could give it to them all, and if more money comes in at some point, then God love them, we'll give it to them. But let's focus on infrastructure from now on, please. All the way near. Yeah, um, I think Sharon and Tom bring up a good point. And, you know, our approach initially had been this sort of like comprehensive, analytical, bigger picture approach. And I think we've been sort of stuck in the weeds on individual projects and lost the larger perspective. And again, just like they said, I completely agree with all the projects we've approved. However, you know, being at that person that wanted to see the matrix utilize, I would like to make a motion to refer to Surrey Finance Committee another comprehensive look at all the projects instead of just a singular project approving and rubber stamping. Let's get back to redeveloping the matrix, looking at the second half of the money and determining what our priorities are, if they're infrastructure, if they're outside requests, and have a plan so that if we do get outside requests, we can rank that in our priority. So. Okay. So we have a motion to refer? Second. We have a second. Alderman Tory. Thanks. Um, so to the, the, the points that have been made, um, I 100% agree with Alderman Neary that there needs to be a discussion, um, and Finance Committee seems to be where it's at these days, um, <laughs> of the use uh, of the ARPA money. Um, as you know, um, when you all started and I was sitting behind the rail, I was advocating that we had a, that we should have a strategic approach of, is it 30% infrastructure, 30% economic development, or whatever those numbers were, and that conversation never happened. And so we're, we're left with trying to f say, is this a good project or not? Sure, it's a great project, but how much of these great projects can we do if we don't have that over the overarching structure um, on the money? better to do it late than never and so I'm absolutely in favor of Alderman Neary's um, motion and the question of whether or not we ba we stop outside versus inside or if we just put a halt on it one of my thoughts is just put a halt on it for a year and let's see what happens then let's have a conversation then so I think having the discussion in Finance Committee is really worthwhile. Alderman but Davis. The only thing I, I'm cautious about is the things that we have approved by this board um, that you, it's going to be you can't undo when they've already moved some projects forward, they've used this money as 
funding toward other funding mechanisms, you know, to review it to see where we are. I think reviewing it to see where we are, reviewing it to see what the impact is, because I, I'm going to bring us back to the original discussion. We said we wanted to see projects that paid themselves back, so to speak, that we saw Im impact to the city, whether it be rooms and meals, whether it be jobs, you know, whether it be infrastructure, wh whether it be this kind of thing. And we've gotten a little bit away from that. Um, and I think feel good money is good money. Don't misunderstand me, but I think, um, you know, I, I, I spoke to it this evening. You know, it's not that you don't support an issue. It's just at some point you have to say, I'll give you this, but I can't give you all of that. It's not that the money's not well spent. There's only so much money. And that's, that's the, the issue of debate. Okay. Any further discussions or comments, questions? All right, hearing none, we have a motion to refer to Finance Committee uh, and a progress report from Mary. It will include as part of that. Uh, any, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes. More work for you. <laughs> it's a busy committee. <laughs> okay, uh, miscellaneous motions, resolutions, and new business. We are still there. Any more new business, motions, resolutions? Alderman Tory. Less of a new business and more just kind of a, a notion. Um, Alderman Gillum and I sit on the board for Rutland's Promise, the uh, family homeless shelter, um, you know, our first family homeless shelter in Rutland. We are having a fundraiser this weekend on Saturday. It's a mini golf tournament. Uh, tickets are $25, but it obviously goes to a good cause. You can buy them directly from me or Alderman Gillum. Um, or if you show up at either 10 o'clock or 11 o'clock at the mini golf course in Menden, um, we'll be doing our fundraiser there. So. Great. Thank you very much. Okay. Big shout out to Alderman Gillum. I hope he's feeling better and I hope he can hear me. He texted us that he couldn't hear the boy. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, speaking any, to the microphone, Mr. President. Uh, any more miscellaneous motions, uh, resolutions, or new business? All right. Hearing none, I'll entertain a motion to go into executive session. So moved. Second. Yeah. No, we got to. We have to have the motions motion. first. Let me, let me earn my earn my money here thank you go for it uh, <laughs> motion to find that premature general public knowledge regarding probable litigation to which the city would be a party would clearly place the city at a substantial disadvantage because the discussion will divulge the city's strategy in such probable litigation and will include confidential attorney client communications made for the purpose of providing professional legal services to the city so moved second <laughs> if motion has been seconded all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes. Okay, and then motion to enter into executive session with the inclusion of the city attorney, zoning administrator, treasurer, and mayor, and clerk to discuss probable litigation as allowed under Title I, Section 313A1E, and Title I, Section 313A1F. So moved. Second. The motion has been seconded. All those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? 